If you work in IT, do you have the recurring dream that you wake up and get to work one morning and all of your data is corrupted? And then you go to your backup and your recovery system and that's gone too? Well, it's not a dream. It's really a nightmare. And it happens to real IT professionals in real organizations. Let's talk about how ransomware is targeting backups and what you can do to protect yourself and your organization. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and I've been working for 20 years with IT leaders to help them acquire the right technology for their organizations. And while I work for ARG, this video is my own and doesn't reflect the views and opinions of my employer. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about how ransomware today is targeting backups. As a quick overview, we're going to talk about the old advice that we used to give to clients about how to leverage their backups and defending themselves against ransomware. And then we're going to talk about how the bad guys have gotten even more destructive in their approach. And then spend a little bit of time talking about the ins and outs of how ransomware works today and the development of a second ransom attempt. And then lastly, what you can do to protect you and your organization. In the past, Having a good backup system that was regularly tested was your best defense against ransomware. The ability for you to spin up new systems and replace corrupted files from your backup platform prevented you from having to pay ransom to the bad actor. Most malware is introduced to the network by end users. In fact, about 85% of malware is introduced to the network by end users. And I know you've got a bunch of defensive measures set up with your firewall and your secure web gateway and secure email gateway and your antivirus and you're even maybe whitelisting certain applications on your network. At some point, a piece of malicious code is going to make it through. As long as you have end users who need to access third-party resources, the risk of malicious activity being introduced to your network is very real. In the old days, ransomware got to work as soon as it was installed on a network. It didn't waste any time mapping drives. It just started encrypting files and hopes that the attacker would get paid as quickly as possible. Newer ransomware, however, operates with a lot more stealth. It will install itself on a network begin to map the network, see what's connected to it, see how far it can spread, and open back doors potentially even to the attacker so they can get in, maybe begin to escalate permissions for the malware, and it can really create a significant amount of infestation within an, a network over a long period of time. Now, one of the points of attack, of course, is that backup system. Malware today will wait for months before detonating to make sure that those backups have been fully corrupted and are essentially worthless. As I mentioned, ransomware will target your backup solution in a couple different ways. The first way is looking for an API that it can leverage to get admin rights to actually delete backup files so they're no longer available for restoration. Another method is to simply track down where those backup files are being stored on the system so it can then encrypt the backup files, making them useless. And then the last way that our ransomware targets backups is by allowing itself to be backed up by the system. Each time a restoral event happens, the ransomware will re-detonate. This causes what's referred to as an attack loop. All of this is the attackers making their attack as painful as possible to increase the likelihood that you'll pay the ransom. A couple comments on when the ransomware actually occurs. Okay, so the production event is obviously going to start encrypting your primary files. This takes a long time, so most bad actors will schedule that detonation over a night or over a weekend, hoping to evade detection for as long as possible. They'll also post ransom notes in many of the drives that they're impacting, allowing you to understand what you need to do to communicate with them, how much money you have to pay them, and how in order to get the unlock the key or the decryption key for your files. Now I want to emphasize you do not want to contact the hacker immediately. Contact your cyber insurance company, your legal counsel, anything but contacting them directly. There are specific strategies for dealing with this ransomware and the moment you contact the, that bad actor the clock on the cycle starts to tick so you are hurting your response time by reaching out to them directly. So hackers are good at extracting money from people. That's their job, right? So they've developed a strategy to take advantage of the dwell time of the months that they're hibernating as essentially in your system, slowly spreading, slowly attacking your, your backups 
they're taking advantage of that time by exfiltrating data. And that data will be used as a second ransom opportunity. So let's say you've paid the first ransom because you didn't have a backup uh, that was usable after your initial ransomware event. Once you've paid that ransom, they'll hit you up for a second ransom or they'll release this data that they've exfiltrated out onto the internet. Not only do we want to have a good backup strategy, but we also want to have a strategy of preventing this in the first place. So let's take a look at some of the things that we can do. Now backups are still an effective strategy to fight ransomware, but there are a couple modifications that you might want to take to your backup strategy. So one modification might be to introduce a backup strategy that has an antivirus tool, which checks signatures of files being backed up and also signatures of files being restored to ensure there's no malicious content there. Now that works relatively well, but it doesn't address the polymorphous malware that we see uh, frequently today, which changes its signature hash every time it's installed. You can also undertake a 3-2-1 strategy, which is having three copies of your data. You have your production copy and two backups. Those two backups are on different media. So you might have one in your private data center and another in a cloud environment. And that cloud environment has to be air gapped or some way physically separated from the rest of your network. Now that's also an effective strategy against some of the threats that we've talked about, some of the approaches that the malware folks have taken, but not all of them. So some other protective measures you can take is introducing uh, multi-factor authentication to the backup solution or implementing a, an immutable backup service which prevents the backup snapshots from being changed or altered or deleted. Another thing that you can do is to get proactive with your cybersecurity. We've talked about a lot of the defensive measures that people have in place, but the offensive measures or proactive measures might include upgrading your antivirus, anti-malware to a full-blown endpoint detection and response or EDR platform, introducing uh, a security information and event management system, a SIM, that also has advanced threat detection services. That's the AI and machine learning that have been introduced over the last couple of years. And to also potentially encrypt your data. That's one of the best ways of preventing that second ransom that we talked about just a few moments ago. Now that's a lot of potential action items. If you want to have a conversation about a more detailed strategy and what you can do for your own organization, I'm happy to have that conversation. I'll put my email address in the description of this video. Feel free to reach out to me. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate a like from you and subscribe if you want to find your way back to this channel in the future. And with that, I thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.